Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about queues, uh, specifically distributed queues, and we're going to be talking about dead letter queues, which are associated with that. Uh, so I'm going to kind of explain basically how a distributed queue works and then why a dead letter queue might be useful. And I'm actually going to show you an example from this morning where uh, a dead letter queue actually saved some work uh, during a GitHub outage. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so we're in paint today, so we're gonna be drawing some diagrams today. Um, I'm gonna be representing a distributed queue as a big arrow, um, as a big arrow, um, and kind of show you how work enters this queue and how things process it. Um, for the sake of discussion, we're gonna consider this to be a first in, first out queue. So work is processed in the order that it's received, and we're not gonna go into more complex topics like, uh, you know, grouping and priorities and uh, reruns and multiple consumers and well we will cover multiple consumers but uh, we're just going to be a simple queue today so when you think about a queue you tend to put work onto it and then you have workers which pull work off of it and and perform an action and then you know finish that work item so you might imagine here uh, we can make i don't know this dark red be our, our work item. So you can imagine a producer comes along and puts on a bunch of work items here. And the work items, uh, the queue internally has some sort of identifier which uniquely identifies these work items. But let's say that we've we've put these on here and time is going you know, in the direction of the arrow. So this was the first one that was put on, this was the last one that was put on. And you might imagine that your queue has some workers associated with it. We can make our workers, I don't know, this blue curvy rectangle here. Um, and the workers will be continually asking the queue, hey, do you have any work that I can do? Um, and when one of them, you know, when there's work available and a worker asks for work and the queue says, I've got work, here you go. Uh, it kind of checks out the queue item. That way that queue item cannot be run by anything else. Uh, and usually you have like a timeout uh, for that work. So let's let's say that this one checked out. Let's say that this is worker one. Oh, it's actually, uh, oh, the font size is huge there. Do 24, we gotta re text box again. Okay, so let's say this is worker one, this is worker two, uh, this is worker three, and this is, you know, item one through uh, item five. All right, so let's say worker one uh, checks out this one queue item. So you'll say that, you know, uh, worker one got this item. Let's say worker three got this item and worker two got this item. So they've, they've checked out, they're starting to process this item and do whatever. Um, and let's say uh, that mysteriously, or let's say that there's a timeout of like, I don't know, five minutes on each of these work items, even though it might not take that much time. Uh, but let's say that while that work was checked out and running, this worker, uh, you know, died for some reason. Either the the box it was on went away, or you know, catastrophic failure, network isolation, any sort of failure mode that causes this item to not be processing anymore. And uh, let's say that these two process normally. So they will finish their work, and then they will mark these queue items as completed. So let's say you know. Q item one and Q item three were marked as, as completed and done. Uh, and then they pick up another piece of work. So let's say they go ahead and pick up, you know, worker this one and this one. Um, but you'll, oops, I numbered these wrong. Dang it. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Let me uh, fix the coloring here. I meant to mark um, this one as this, this one here is green. Whoops. <laughs> I did them out of order to make it uh, uh, to show you that they can run out of order, um, but I didn't, you know, properly do that. Okay, but anyway, we know that this uh, this item down here failed. That's why we've marked it as red. Uh, and after a while, the queue will notice that this work item never got completed within its timeout. So what it'll do is it'll delete this sort of worker like checkout, and then it'll make this item available to the other queue workers. Uh, so let's say, you know, that this this um, this one finished its work and then queue, uh, worker one is available so it can go ahead and pick up this item. 
So if we go back here and, you know, this item now is checked out by worker one. Uh, so that's that's what's called a, a, re, a retry or often referred to as a redrive. Um, and a redrive policy usually says that like, after this number of times, uh, either give up, so like, don't ever process this work item again, pretend like it never happened, um, or you can send things to a dead letter queue, which is the topic of the video today. So let's say that, you know, this particular item three was, was just bad for some reason, and it always caused workers to either crash or die or not be able to complete the work. So let's say, let's say that again, you know, like worker one tried to pick up item three and it, it failed, but the worker didn't die. So like it, it crashed or something. Um, and so, you know, after a while, the queue will notice, oh, this one didn't get picked up. Uh, maybe worker three has completed its work by now, and so it tries to go through here. And let's say that we have a redrive policy of two times, or yeah, let's say two times. So this is retried two times, um, and so it has been unprocessable, and so it might put this into a dead letter queue. And you can imagine a dead letter queue as you know, just another queue. Let's actually make it black. This is our you know primary queue, primary queue. And this is the dead letter queue. Now, the dead letter queue doesn't have workers associated with it. It is just basically a place to take items that couldn't be run and put them into a temporary storage where a you know the operator of the the distributed system can say, oh, look at this item, this is why it failed. Maybe they need to fix their application code to improve that particular scenario. Uh, maybe it was an external failure that was transient, and those are things that can be retried after the the old the other system comes back up, or something like that. Um, but in this case, you know, we retried twice, and our redrive policy said after two times, place this into a dead letter queue, and so it has sort of taken this work item and put it into our dead letter queue. And then we can, you know, debug this item later and figure out what went wrong with it. But it doesn't clog up our workers continuously. Uh, you can imagine a redrive policy that just retries forever, and then these items would just like continually take up a worker that either <laughs> dies in response to it, crashes, or or something else. Um, and so that's that's kind of kind of the ideas behind a distributed queue. Uh, now I'm going to show you a real world example of this because it actually <laughs> you know kind of saved my butt this morning, and that is in pre-commit CI, uh, which is a CI system that has a has a queue. Uh, this is in, in our in our scenario, this is going to be our run queue, um, which is how you know people make pull requests or pushes, and that says, "Hey, CI system, you need to do some work." And you know the the each of the pushes or or PRs are represented as a work item, and then I have workers which pull items off of that and perform the actual uh, CI jobs. But uh, when <laughs> when GitHub has problems, which happened this morning. Um, Oh, why is this graph not showing? There we go. So GitHub had problems this morning, and I have uh, alarms in place that let me know, you know, when when things enter this dead letter queue. Uh, so I also use this dead letter queue as a monitoring tool. So I know, like, if something has catastrophically failed, I probably need to fix something, or something is down externally. Uh, so that's what this graph is. This graph is the number of items in the dead letter queue, and GitHub had an issue right around. 6, a, uh, 6 UTC, 6 a.m. UTC. And uh, the first time that pre-commit was, or pre-commit CI was affected by it was right around 620. Uh, GitHub actually didn't report it until 1400, which like, we'll, we'll cut them some slack, but we, we were able to notice their outage much sooner than they did. Um, but you'll notice that like during this period, a lot of items uh, accrued in this dead letter queue. I tried to flush it here before GitHub had announced that it was fixed, thinking that maybe it had been fixed because you can see like it flatlined a little bit here. And my thought was like, oh, maybe maybe they fixed this already. Um, so I, I re-ran all the items in the dead letter queue. I basically took them out of the dead letter queue and placed them back into the normal queue, hoping that they would you know rerun and perhaps succeed if they were tried again. Uh, but they <laughs> they did not, uh, or at least some, some of them did, but not all of them did. So it was a, a bit of a partial outage. I actually requeued it twice, and you can see, you know, it didn't, it was not able to process all those. Uh, but after GitHub resolved their outage, which was right around 1700, um, I was actually out on a bike ride. So <laughs> there's a 30 minute lag between 
good at resolving this and me actually requeuing things. Uh, but I was able to take everything and rerun all of those failed things. So even though, you know, 51 things failed to run during GitHub's outage, um, I was able to recover all of those after the fact because of my dead letter queue. Uh, in the past, you know, I've had software bugs and sometimes the software bugs lead to crashes in my code and those will also end up in the dead letter queue. And it allows me to pick those up later and say, why did this fail? Oh, it failed for this reason. Okay, I can go change my code to fix this particular use case and then, you know, solve solve the problem there. Uh, but anyway, that's that's dead letter queues. And here's a, a real world example of dead letter queues. Uh, hopefully this was interesting. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.